What is going on everybody? As you can tell by the title, we are at 10,000 miles in the 2022 Audi S3. Um, just wanted to go over a couple things, maybe if anyone's trying to look to get this car in the future or whatever. Um, I had no racing going on this weekend. I actually worked all weekend and uh, not really anything coming up this weekend either. So I figured I'd throw this video out. Just uh, see what you guys think. So. Boom, there we are, 10,141 miles, um, averaged 26 miles per gallon over uh, that many miles, it's pretty crazy. Uh, I beat on the car a lot, so seeing that at 26 is, is actually pretty good. If I'm on the highway, comfort mode, cruising, say around 75, you can get this thing up to 35 miles per gallon and just cruising the seven speed in here is great comfort mode is awesome uh, you know this is my first car with acc the adaptive cruise control and the car actually it doesn't just keep its distance and stay in the lane the steering wheel will turn like you hands off the wheel going through a sweeping corner like it turns for you now i won't switch lanes when you hit the um you know the thing but i mean it does a lot of really cool things it even parks itself you go down here when you get to a parking spot hit the park button actually no this one right here the other one with the steering wheel there we go sorry my door was open so right here you pull up to a parking space in like any uh any kind of way like up beside it behind it whatever and it will uh it will park the car for you it'll tell you when to change gears and it will back up or pull in or do parallel parking for you it's actually really neat and one of the things i do hate you guys just heard maybe not is the auto off which isn't the most uh convenient thing but, but what is cool is that say you're at a stoplight and it does turn off the car will turn back on when the car in front of you starts moving like it senses that so before you even let your foot off the brake or onto the accelerator um the engine already restarted because it, it follows it knows that the car in front of you moves so it's time to go which is actually pretty neat um, one of the things I hated in this car, and I'll put a picture here of what the steering wheel looked like beforehand. It's an ugly, regular steering wheel that I hated. So I got this one custom made, and I'll put the link in the description. Uh, this, this is just a really simple wheel. I got the airbag cover and the wheel, white stitching, white line, blacked out. I still need to go through and paint this. They couldn't do that. But that was one of the things I really hated about the car. Um, otherwise the interior stock besides that I'm waiting for someone hopefully p3 to come out with the boost gauge It sits right here. That would be dope. I just bought this really nice phone holder uh, For the pop socket and we'll go over that in a different video But I'll drop a link for this down below as well. It hooks right into the vent. that will use these These types of vents are the ones that go vertically and there's a magnet built in there and uh, If you want one of these pop sockets with my logo on it, let me know but uh, yeah, this slides right in. It's really nice. And it's, there's, like I said, there's a magnet. So the phone will stay like this or it will stay like this. It's really nice. Now, I really like the vents in general. Pretty high quality stuff. And you got, this is like an iPod. So you can change the volume with this. Woo! We got some country going. So that's that. Uh, one thing I still don't like about the interior, there's no place to put your sunglasses because of the sunroof controls, but the sunroof is pretty dope, so I ain't even mad about it. I got myself a nice uh, Bryce Jordan production. Shout out to my boy, Jesse, who made me this. And I just keep my sunglasses in this when it's in the car now, so it's not a big deal. All right, on to this next part. Let's take a look. I'll post a picture here of how the car looks stock and how she looks now. Got the diffuser on here. That's like the main thing I've changed because I hated the way the stock one looked. I still need to get the little they're like matching fins that go across here um i think that i'll really complete the rear end there and i'm still debating on whether to either delete this or leave it or add the racing line emblem here which i think would actually look good you guys let me know what you think about the racing line emblem it'll be black it matches it looks good i think it'd be the symmetry is what i like but i think it'd also look good without that but it would also look good with the i don't know i think it all of it would look good. Still kind of want to figure out something to do with these. 
but I don't know. I'm gonna black these out eventually, but neither here nor there. Not really big on my list, but the newest thing we did is get these Falcon RT660s on. And man, are these things ever meaty. They're mo these are a 24540, and they're more like a 265. Like, I was actually gonna run a spacer with my PS4Ss to bring the wheel out, but now, like, the wheel, I mean, this is, like, right on there. Like, it, it kind of rubbed in there a little bit. So this is, like, the perfect perfect size i guess i still need to add a little bit more camber i'm at negative 2.3 and i want it to be around 3.2 so we're working on that very soon but the wheels are nice lightweight these tires are nice and sticky got a real nice tread pattern on them while we're under here you can kind of see maybe not can't really see the camera too well we got all the burke line goodies going on you can see the uh trailing arms there kind of see some of all the tubular goodness it's about roughly five thousand some dollars worth of just tubular suspension and bushings that we've already done to the back of this car and here soon we'll be moving to the front i just discovered the other day from 529 innovations they have the uh a spherical bushing kit for the front arms they get rid of the like rubber bushings so it'll be metal bushings like these for the front arms and then they have adjustable springs for the stock struts from ground control so i can corner balance the car and they have a, i think they have a higher spring rate um which would be nice for this so we're looking into that and also need to do the um, strut tops for from 034 for the rear struts still but it is what it is we're, we're getting there next up is definitely the intercooler from do 88 this thing heat soaks so quickly as soon as that's out we're getting it and then the Verkline front subframe as well and then we'll be pretty dialed from there until a tune comes out thinking about the jb4 still on the fence um i'm also about to order the matching front lip for this thing from rieger that's who the, the future is from as well uh, to kind of spice up this front end every time i see a car that has one on instagram it just makes me wonder why i haven't ordered one already but they just it takes so long to get here and they're so expensive and they don't really do anything besides looks but you know that's that's instagram life you go on instagram you see all these things that you want that you don't have and it kind of makes you feel like shit so that's why i really don't stay on there and if you guys send me messages on instagram i probably never see them uh just because instagram's kind of toxic but it does give uh cool ideas for aesthetics and stuff but uh let's pop the hood real quick and we'll see here. I'll show you guys what's going on under here. Not a whole lot. Well, I guess I didn't pop it yet. I uh, didn't do a whole lot. Just some racing line goodies here and there. A lot of it I already had from the Golf. Oh, and this hood's aluminum, by the way. So we got a nice aluminum hood. We did throw some stickers up under there. Shout out to Sean. Shout out to Racing Line. And some park line stuff. So we got all the racing line beauty caps. We got the intake hose, the intake washer cap we got the inlet down there we got the r8 coolant cap we got the racing line oil filter cap dipstick and then can't really tell we got the EQC cool grounding kit so the, the grounding isn't on the cool packs anymore it's uh you know you deep pin them and you run the wire back and i have it grounded right here we also have the racing line coolant hose that used to go across here and it just out here for a little bit of a more clean look that's about all that's going on up here there's no uh real readily available downpipes for these yet and even if there was there's no tunes so there's no point yet really i just you need an intercooler before you even throw more power at this thing because they heat so just so bad so quickly uh, even with a little bit of 85 it, i mean it's still you, you don't have a tune so you can't go full 85 to even help temps a little bit even if you wanted to i think that's about all we've done so far a lot of the stuff like most of the stuff is suspension and then the intake to make it go fast wheel tire uh, that's it and there's a lot of plans for suspension in the works uh you know we don't really know what these motors can do stock turbo wise or on 85 or anything yet hopefully we find out this year because i'm impatient i do want more power but this 
See, I want more power for drag racing, but at autocross, this car probably has too much power. And the transmission is like, is super, super good. It knows when to downshift, it knows when to upshift at autocross. Like it, it's a very, uh, no good, good thinking, good programming transmission. This DQ381 is, is great for autocross. And I expect it would be pretty damn good on a road course as well. But at drag racing, launching this thing, it slips the clutches a lot. So a TCU tune would do this car a lot of good for a better drag time. And I'll post up again here, my drag times. The best one I think I got was what 1262 at 108. And what that was like a one eight something 60 foot. And then when I went to the eighth mile that had some prep, I was able to cut a one seven oh 60 foot and run like an eight one at 84 or 85. So I had a better 60 foot at the eighth because there was prep. And then I had a, actually had a better eighth at um, at the quarter mi quarter mile somehow, even though I was kind of spinning off the line, I still got a better eighth, but a way worse 60 foot like a 0.88 or a 0.18 worth 60 foot, but still got a better eighth mile. And I kind of messed with my head. I don't understand how that works. Maybe the, the density, the, the DA, um, gave me more, like better to make a better time. Just traction wasn't there. So if I had both traction and a good DA, I think I could get my time down to the 12, five something with a one, I think I could get into the one six sixty foots honestly, and that's when I was on my Pilot Sport 4S. So now with these RT six sixties on the track uh, with a good DA, I think I could really get a good time. But to get everything lined up and the and the car gods align and to bless me to get that pass, who knows? This car will probably be on stock software for a while unless we do wind up getting that JB four, which the only reason I'm against it is because. You're throwing all that extra power at the car without a TCU tune. Uh, and I don't want to really prematurely wear the clutches with extra power. Because like I said, the clutches already slip a ton off the launch. And then the one-two shift, you can feel them kind of slipping as well. So it doesn't like super bang a gear. So I guess I just need to do more research. Most people that go fast on the MQB platform that isn't a five-cylinder, they all have the DQ250, which was a six-speed and those uh, shift a little bit harder, and but I don't think the uh, tra those transmissions aren't as strong as these. I think those might have better clutches, or I've, I've heard, and maybe you guys can correct me. I don't really know. I still need to do research. I never have time for anything. I was told that the the 250 is dry clutches, and the 381 has wet clutches, and that's why it slips so much off the line. And they say it doesn't really affect anything in in terms of uh, where it's just like the way it's programmed, but I think you know with a TCU tune that could not slip it as much and just give the car all the power that it wants, that we could really get off the line quicker, get a way better 60 foot, thus making our eighth mile and quarter mile times a lot lower and a lot better. But that's in time. I mean, I've only had the car like six, seven months now, and uh, we've done a ton of modding to it already, at least in terms of suspension. That Verkline stuff I actually had from my Golf R, and uh, yeah, so it didn't really cost me anything to, to put it on here. But if you're buying that shit out of the box, it is super expensive. And you know, doing it right off the bat on a stock car, you're not going to see, like, especially a new car, you're not going to see huge results because the bushings you have in the car are, are fresh, and the car is obviously just stock tuned. So there's not a whole lot of power to even throw at it to have the need to get those parts, but like. Say you were already in a stage three car with say 50, 60,000 miles on it, your car, and obviously you're putting a lot more power to the ground. So bushings are gonna deflect more, um, you know, and the, the wear on the bushings from that mileage, it's, you know, the bushings are already not optimal. So having put this these parts in a more powerful, uh, with more miles, more wear on it, you would see a bigger result than just putting it on a brand new car but when it comes down to the future you know a year or two from now already having these parts and once the tuning's out and the car has more power it's that's when it's really going to shine so i'm glad i'm really sticking to doing the suspension first rather than power well i don't really have an option 
but JB4 to get power. So get the suspension all done first. Once the tuning's out, we'll already have all the groundwork done and we can throw as much power as it'll allow us to. And we should be able to uh, not have to really worry about anything else in terms of getting power to the ground in a good way. So I don't know. Really goal with this car would be to run a, a 1099 at whatever mile an hour. I just want a 10 second car that I can daily drive and uh, have a ton of fun at autocross with and still go out with the boys on the street, cut a good time, betting money, you know, this, that, and the third. So really, I'm just hoping for an all around badass car. And with learning all the things I did on my R32 and my Golf R, I think that I can make that happen, especially with the people that I know now and the connections that I've made, talking with Kyle, um, now meeting with the dude at, at uh, 529 Innovations. I got uh, Sean from It's Not Stock in my corner and, and all these, I mean, you got uh, EQT, my only sponsor, you know, Ed is the bomb. And of course, under Ed, you have Cliff, you got Dave, you got um, all these different people. And then you guys know, uh, Built by Thomas over in Arizona. He's an amazing engine builder. It's really been cool seeing him progress over the years um, from where he started to what he's doing and all, all the cars he lines up all the time. So I know exactly who I'm gonna go to if I need a motor build. And uh, I know what parts to get, what companies to talk to, and just all, all the right things. So I think all the things I learned from the past two cars and racing and development, now I get in this car and I can do everything that I want to do and do it right the first time without gutting the car and getting rid of AC and doing all these uh, kind of like hack, wouldn't say hack, but doing things that I really wouldn't otherwise do. You know, so this car, I, I feel like I can really do it right, have a really good looking, great functioning in every type of motorsport that I want to do and look great while doing it. So that's my hopefully at least 10 minute ramble for this week. Uh, hopefully we get back to some racing soon. Every weekend it's been raining like crazy. And it's been so annoying. I don't work this weekend, and there's no scheduled racing this weekend. So maybe I can get out Friday or Saturday night, hit some people up. We can go out and do some runs, have some fun or something. Get you guys some racing, drag racing type of content. So I know that's what you guys like. So um, look forward to the RT660 review on the track at Next Autocross. Um, we got some data logging mumbo jumbo we'll talk more about that when that gets here actually i want to go over this phone mount some more and a couple things lined up we just need time and as soon as do 88 puts out that intercooler we're snagging it we're putting it on and we'll do some draggy times for that as well because it's i mean it's 86 right now and the real fill is 90 and like the humidity is through the wall um or through the roof rather and the intercooler is really really going to be our biggest benefit i think also still need to get motor mounts and that subframe and those bushings and different springs and all these different things. So many things planned for the car. Just stay tuned. Let me know what you guys think or what you guys want to see. Um, that's a, I haven't had any issues with this car. I love it. She's due for her now second oil change. And uh, now I'm hot and sweaty in the car. I need to go grocery shopping. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip flop.